few questions. Is Kundalini awakening is the only way to reach enlightened state? Actually, when you become enlightened, the Kundalini gets awakened. The Kundalini awakening is not the only way. It is also one way. It is not the only way. There are so many other techniques. In the ASP, we do only one technique to awaken the Kundalini. All other techniques are different kinds of methods. It is actually vice versa. When you uh, become enlightened, the Kundalini automatically gets awakened. But to reach the enlightenment state, there are so many other paths. So, you can reach through any technique. But when you reach the state, enlightened state, the Kundalini automatically awakens. Why do we do prostrations and touch feet? Is it not a dehumanizing experience? It is the only humanizing experience. I tell you, if you don't touch the feet of the God or the Master, if you will be touching the feet of your ego. If you don't follow the God or your Master, you will be following your ego. If you chant divine name, you will not be chanting the other things. I don't say you should chant the God's name. But if you don't, you will be chanting Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola, Pisa, Pisa, that's all. If you don't touch the feet of the God, touch the feet of the Masters, you will be touching your own ego's feet. Two things. Either you will listen to the Master or you will be listening to your ego. Master is a man who has achieved already the eternal bliss, Nityananda. So if you follow him, you will get that state. Your ego, what it has achieved and what towards what it is leading you, you know. If you are quite happy, comfortable, content, blissful towards the path which your ego is leading you, then you touch your ego's feet, nothing wrong. If you are happy, ecstatic, blissful with your ego, then you follow your ego, you follow touching the feet of your ego, nothing wrong. If you are little uncomfortable, if you want to change, follow the master's path. There are only two things, master and mind. If you follow the master, you cannot follow the mind. If you follow the mind, you cannot follow the master. If you touch the feet of the master, you will not touch the feet of the mind. If you don't touch the feet of the master, you will be touching the feet of the mind. That's all. That is why there is a beautiful word, Namaha. When you touch the feet of the master, they say Namaha. Means, not mine. I am not. I surrender the I and me at your feet. I and mine at your feet. The I and mine is surrendered at the feet of the Master or the God. So touching the feet of the God or the Master is only the humanizing experience. If you don't touch, you will be touching your ego. You will be following your senses. You will be following your mind, which is the greatest dehumanizing experience. Touching the feet of your mind and the ego, carrying the ego and the mind is only the real dehumanizing experience. You drop from your divinity, you become human, not even human, animal. So, touching the master's feet will make you a human being. Imbibing his teachings will make you divine. So, this is the only humanizing experience which can happen to your life. Is learning about your past lives a good way to help resolve some of your issues in the present life? If it is, would you be able to uncover my, my past life and tell what it was like, etc. Learning about your past lives is a really a good way to help resolve some of your issues. And we will be doing this meditation of touching your past life tomorrow in the ASP. If you can attend the ASP, you will be undergoing the meditation or cleansing of the chakras which has given experience or glimpse of their past life for many, many, many participants. Any more questions? Swamiji, mm. it seems that um, from what you are saying about the illogical nature of death and sex and mm. meditation that following 
that being with an enlightened master <coughs> is an illogical process. The mind has to, at some point, surrender or step away from the mm. picture. Mm. Because then you're just doing the same old thing you always do. Whatever that is. Mm. Pizza, Coca-Cola, go to the mm. movies, whatever. Mm. So, to let go mm. and to be illogical, mm. it's very difficult sometimes. But at the same time, the, the last part of my question, but you're so unhappy with the logical way that you have no choice. You have to. Just let go, go crazy. <laughs> go illogical. Maybe not crazy. Go illogical. Is, it, is this true? You asked a right question. You are undergoing the last nightmare. Nirvana, the last nightmare. Ramana Maharshi was questioned by some devotee. How can seeing the master help us wake up to wake up or to become enlightened Bhagawan. He says master is the Simma Swapna for you. He is the nightmare for you. <laughs> if you see a nightmare in the dream you suddenly wake up. If you see an <laughs> elephant chasing you or a snake biting you what happens? You wake up from the dream. The same way master is a Simma Swapna. He just frightens you. In the two ways you will wake up. If you get the dream of deep desire, if you are going to get something which you have longed for so many days, the moment your desire or the greed, your desire or the fear, both appears in your dream, you will wake up. If you, if you see somebody whom you want to see for a long time in your dreams, the moment you are going towards him or her, to grab him or her, you wake up. <laughs> the same way, the fear also. If you see the nightmares, the dreams which totally shakes you, frightens you, you wake up. In the dreams in which your deep desires are getting fulfilled, in that moment also you wake up. The moment you are about to get your dreams fulfilled, you wake up. Dreams related to sex wakes you up. Dreams related to fear wakes you up. Both wakes you up. In both, you just wake up. You come to the conscious state. Same way, Master also uses the both technique. He shows you the greed of bliss. He continuously is blissful. He is so joyful, ecstatic. You always feel greed of him. I have seen many people feeling jealous of me. <laughs> Swamiji, what you speak, something we understand, something we don't understand, that is different. But the state in which you are living, it is really jealous, creating jealous Swamiji. <laughs> Continuously happy, even after so much of problems. And so many persons come and tell the difficulties and so much of work and so many things are happening. But continuously happy, really I feel sometimes jealous of you. <laughs> he shows, creates a tremendous greed in you. Something more is possible. Master is a tree. You are a seed. He shows you, you can become a tree. Master shows that you can become a tree. He proves your potentiality. He is the certificate or authority of the state in which you can flower to the state in which you can blossom are the state which you can reach. He continuously creates greed in you to awaken, to become enlightened. And for some people who will not work towards the greed, for them, he creates a deep fear of logic. <laughs> you are in the hell, seventh hell. The desire of seventh heaven and the fear of seventh hell <laughs> is created just to Wake you up, slap your face, wake up your Buddha, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> so just to wake you up, the deep possible greed and the deep possible fear, both are created in you. Death penalty was enacted in the US constitution not long ago. Now government executes people who murder someone 
is the spiritually correct thing to do that would this help the overall spiritual development of society or would it not inflict more negative emotions of course we are nobody to comment the law we are nobody to criticize or comment anything legal but from spiritual point of view i can give you a small explanation i for i if you just if somebody takes your i if you take his i he will take one more of your i he will take one more of his i then his person will take one of your person's one i and your person will take one of his person's i the i for i if it goes on goes on goes on where it will end the whole world will come blind it will end only in the blindness of the whole world so the i for i is not the punishment but for the social reasons but for the social things what for the government is executing we are nobody to comment we cannot criticize the political structure or the constitution of a country they will be having their own reason but from spiritual point of view this is the idea surely not death for death any other question the meditations we had the first three days i'm not used to this particular kind of meditation you ended it with a chant and it started with om i believe could you say clearly what that is i mean could you say it so i can hear what that that chant is what oh, oh the med- oh, when the meditation is ended yes it means om shanti 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 means peace okay that is the vibration which creates a peace in you which creates a silence in you okay. it's like a bridge actually in the deep meditation state you may be in the other plane you need to come down to this plane suddenly bringing you may give you a shock okay. or a jolt okay it may yeah. give you a little bit of shaking okay you should be brought in a very loving beautiful way okay you see when the babies are delivered this nurses they behave so rudely with the kids they get a shock actually of course we have to make them cry nothing uh, nothing is wrong about it we should make them cry only then they will start breathing mm-hmm. but not so rudely mm-hmm. they get the shock they are not received with the love or welcoming mood when they come on the planet earth mm-hmm. the first moment how they are being reacts that will be the same reaction which will be carried till the end so when you come down from meditation a small bridge is necessary to connect yourself to the this plane so that we can carry that silence with you continuously that is why om shanti 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 to bring you down to this level it's like a bridge so that you can carry that joy and the peace and the silence throughout your life throughout the 24 hours of a day you hear if there is some importance or something behind that because i don't i uh-huh. haven't seen in home is giving uh-huh. this turban turban what you are asking the head covering yes mm-hmm. <coughs> so that's why i ask for giving if i am uh, nothing wrong what is there what nothing wrong in asking i am inspired actually by vivekananda that is the reason the dress of vivekananda i am using that's the reason why i am wearing that in the day to day life philosophically there is nothing much behind it even when vivekananda used it is nothing much philosophical reason actually i do not know why he used I have some love for him. Just to express my love for him, I use that same thing. And in my personal life, whatever I use, whomsoever has guided me or helped me to, towards this enlightenment, I give my respect to all of them. 
My dress, you can see, it's like a Zen Buddhist monks. Hindus don't, Hindu monks don't wear like this. It's a dress of Zen Buddhist monks. <coughs> because for my enlightenment, Zen Buddhism has helped a lot. I vow my enlightenment to Zen Buddhism. Zen Buddhism and their meditation techniques has helped me a lot. That's why my dressing method will be just like Zen Buddhist monks. So all the, all the gardens which has helped me, I plucked from fl plucked flower of some all the spiritual gardens and I made a beautiful bouquet. Mm -hmm. So my dress and my teachings, my life, nothing belongs to one tradition. Nothing belongs to one religion. Wherever I found some beautiful flowers, I collected that. Whatever way I am helped to reach this state, whomsoever helped, I collected flowers from everyone and I am using it. That is why in our meditation camp, we use the meditation technique from seven different traditions. The first meditation tomorrow which we are going to practice will be from Tibetan Buddhism. Tomorrow we will be having seven different sessions. One on love, second on worry, third on death, third on sex, fourth on death, fifth on jealousy and creativity, sixth on ego, seventh on contentment. Every meditation is brought from the different religion. One from Zen Buddhism, one from Tibetan Buddhism, one from Christianity, one from Tantra, one from Vedanta, one from Sufism, one from Sikhism. All the meditation techniques are taken from different religions. Whatever tradition, religion helped me, I have taken techniques and the methods from all those traditions. This is also just my respect to the Vivekananda. Just my memory, loving memory to him made me be a disturbance. There is no spiritual reason or the background behind it. People ask me, is it Swamiji too much of energy you are covering it? <laughs> I don't know, no, no, only too much of hair I am covering it. <laughs> Not too much of energy. <laughs> and people actually ask me this. People, what all questions they ask, you don't know. Swamiji, how do you keep your hair so long? <laughs> and what all curiosities they get, you don't know. Instead of asking how to grow the brain, they ask how to grow the hair. <laughs> <laughs> then, any other question? I have hmm. one question. Hmm. Actually, everybody has to realize their own self. Hmm. So, how the teacher or guru can help to realize the self? Him, hmm. that particular person. He's like a uh, navigator. Navigator can guide you the shortest way. See. Even if you don't have navigator, if you don't know the path also, any one day you will reach, after 30 years or 40 years, if you just go around, some one day you have to reach that place. You have to reach your destination. With navigator, it will be only 3 hours. Without navigator, it will be 30 years. <laughs> Master is just like a navigator. He has already reached. So he can give you the guidance. I always tell the people. I am just 10 miles ahead of you in the same highway. You ask me through cell phone, Swamiji, how is the tra uh, traffic? Can we travel? Can we come? <laughs> I tell them, come. No fog, no ice, no snow, no accident, no congestion. Follow. Come. <laughs> I give the clearance, that's all. With master, the path becomes more easy. Time of traveling is reduced. Next. Here and sit quietly and the papers. What, are, what is the meaning of people are not a therapy? Mm. It is not even a Telugu, it is Tamil. <laughs> <laughs> one of the devotee, one of our devotee, he had a vision of Kailash when he sat and meditated with us. When the, in the ASP, in the uh, two days meditation course, there is a meditation called Agnya meditation. We work on the third eye. He had the vision of Kailash that a whole scene of Kailash, Shiva is dancing and now uh, everybody is dancing but just Shiva is sitting and meditating. Nandi is dancing, Bringi is dancing, Ganesha is dancing, 
Devi is dancing, everybody is dancing, but just Shiva is sitting and meditating. He had that vision. So he saw in my form that Shiva is sitting and meditating and all of us are dancing. So he wrote the whole thing as a poem. Everybody is dancing, oh Shiva come down to dance with us. That is the poem. It's a reception song. It's a beautiful meaning. It has got beautiful meaning. It's a reception song. Yes. Does awareness of past lives assist you on the journey to enlightenment? It's necessity. It is not necessity actually. Awareness of the uh, memory of the past life is not a necessity towards the enlightenment. Okay. So let you understand all this knowledge and let you digest and have the experience of eternal bliss. Nitya Ananda. Thank you.